Using dry filament is an important factor to achieving quality 3D prints. Plastic filament is hydroscopic, meaning that it absorbs moisture from the air, which is not good. Wet filament produces bad looking prints and compromises the structural integrity as well. These prints are essentially weaker, poor quality, and won't last as long as ones made from dry filament. If you live in an area where humidity is typically lower, then you won't have to worry about this as much as others, but even then, there are certain types of materials which are highly absorbent no matter where you live, yet they're common in 3D printing. So today we're taking a look at the Sunlu Filler Dryer S4, which is an accessory to help eliminate moisture from your 3D printing filament. Let's find out how well it works, take a look at its features, and see if it's something worth adding to your 3D printing setup. Let's dive in. Hey, this is Rohan here. Thanks for tuning in to Creatorific. As mentioned, today we're taking a look at the Sunlu Filler Dryer S4, which is larger than average filament dryer capable of holding four 1kg spools at once. First off, I'd like to give a special thanks to Sunlu for sending me this item to review, and they were even so nice as to provide me with this white version, which goes nicely with my setup, and a few spools of their newly released filaments. Even though this is a sponsored video, I just want to let you know that this review is based on my honest assessment and opinions and not at all influenced by the brand. Let's get into this review though, and start with the unboxing and overview of the Filler Dryer S4. The S4 comes securely packaged inside its cardboard box with enough packing foam to keep it safe. Packaged inside of the S4, you'll find the user guide, the power cable, the accessories bag, and a couple of long PTFE tubes. The top is secured by latches, divided into two sections, and on the back we find our power switch. Checking out sunlu.com, we can see that the S4's MSRP is normally $140, which is significantly cheaper than other filament dryers of the same size that I've found on the market. I've provided a link in the video description if you're interested in checking out the Sunlu website. Also, there's a discount code that could save you a few bucks as well. In terms of specs, the S4 measures 18 inches wide, 12 inches tall, and 9 inches deep. It weighs just over 10 pounds and has a power rating of 320 watts. It sits on metal legs which has cushions applied to elevate it off of the surface. There are 8 total exit ports which give you the option of feeding filament either through the tops or the sides, and vents are visible from the rear to help the S4 intake air. Looking inside, you can see two of the three fans that the S4 has to move warm air around, the bearing rollers, as well as the desiccant compartment, which isn't really necessary, but I guess is nice to have anyways. Let's get this thing assembled and see how it performs, but first a quick message from my sponsor. PCBWay is an awesome company offering custom prototyping and fabrication services using a variety of different methods. For an on-the-spot estimate, just click the PCB Instant Quote button on the main page and input your order details. Save up to 50% off this holiday season as well with their PCB Way Christmas Big Sales event. Redeem free coupons to save on orders, get up to 3 free Christmas and New Year's themed prototypes with up to $20 of production cost covered, save on their PCB fabrication and assembly services, plus give their blind unbox a try for a chance to win cool prizes. You could get lucky. Okay, back to our video. So we'll start by feeding our PTFE tubing through the ports that we intend to use. We'll then use the metal clips included to secure the PTFE tubing in place which prevents it from coming loose. Afterwards, we'll plug any of the unused ports. Next, we load our filament rolls and route them through the PTFE tubing. And lastly, we install our power cable, then flip the on switch. The S4 features a responsive touchscreen that's backlit. Pressing the set button on the far left allows you to cycle through the different options of the S4. You can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit for the temperature, as well as move the degrees up or down in increments. The status LEDs can be toggled either on or off as per user preference. There's a half dozen filament presets which can be manually adjusted, 
The timer can be set from as low as one hour to as high as six hours. A target humidity can be programmed. And there are two operational modes for the S4. I almost forgot to mention that the machine does make a beeping sound anytime buttons are pressed, which can get annoying, but unfortunately can't be disabled. The status LEDs will pulse whenever the S4 is working to achieve its target humidity. When target humidity is reached, the S4's LEDs will remain solid and it'll cycle back and forth between the two as the machine works to keep filament dry. Mode 1 of the S4 operates the machine for the duration of the time set, then it shuts off. While Mode 2 of the S4 operates the machine for the duration of the time set, then it will shut off but turn on periodically to stay within range of the target humidity. Now that we have our filament dryer set up and we understand how it operates, let's put it to use and see how it performs. If you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to like and subscribe to this channel as well as turn on the notification bell. I really appreciate each and everyone's support and it helps to continue to make videos like this. Okay, I'm ready to operate the machine to see how well it performs, but one issue. The filament that we have is too new and it's already dry. So what I did was place it inside of a tote bin with some warm water overnight to saturate the filament and ensure that it soaked up enough moisture for this test. The following day I started to test print using the saturated filament and I did notice quite a bit of bubbling and stringing taking place for certain materials. While drying the wet filament for comparison, I took the opportunity to compare the internal and external measurements using a hygrometer. We could see that the S4 is operating as intended and keeping our filament at the optimal conditions. The included user guide for the S4 provides suggested settings for a dozen different filament types that you could use as reference. The S4's power consumption is in line with what it reports, but majority of the time it's significantly lower. When operating, the S4 does produce a bit of noise from its blowing fans, but I don't find it to be too unreasonable and it doesn't really bother me. This might be something to consider for others though. I saw right away when using the dried filament that certain materials printed much better than before. TPU specifically saw the biggest improvement. Let's take a closer look and compare the wet versus dry prints. So this here is Sunloose Silk PLA Plus Rainbow Material. The dry only looks slightly better than the wet one with tighter layer lines, but the wet looks pretty good as well. This here is Sunloo's High Speed Matte PTG in White. It might be a little difficult to see because of the color, but this one definitely looked better with the dried filament. The wet filament had quite a bit of stringing and came out fuzzy looking. This one here is Sunloo's High Speed PLA Marble in Ashen Concrete. The wet filament for this material as well didn't look too bad, but you could still see improvements with the dry filament with tighter layer lines. Next is Sunloo's PLA Glow in the Dark in White. This material saw a significant improvement as the wet filament produced lots of stringing and came out fuzzy and rough looking, while the dry filament came out looking perfect. Lastly, we have Sunloo's TPU Flexible Blue Filament, and this material benefited the most as TPU is notorious for absorbing moisture and can be extremely difficult to print with. The wet filament produced lots of stringing, bubbling, and a few gaps in the layer lines, while the dry filament looked much, much better. So to summarize our testing, certain materials only saw a slight improvement, while others saw a significant upgrade. Maybe not every type of filament needs to be dried before printing, but every material that was dried using the S4 came out looking pretty much perfect. So the Fill a Dryer S4 works just as it's intended to. So to conclude this review of Sunloose Fill a Dryer S4, I'll share my final thoughts. The S4 looks to be a good value large format filament dryer for 3D printing that performs just as it should. The price seems to be reasonable, and Sunlu also advertises that you can upgrade this machine to enclose huge 3kg spools and even use it to dry shoes and other stuff as well, so it's pretty versatile. A filament dryer of this size might be more than the average person needs, but you can also check out their filament dryer S2 for single spools which will produce similar results if you think that the S4 is overkill. Some pros of the S4 are, it automates filament drying and does it effectively. It can dry up to 4 spools simultaneously. It feeds filaments from the enclosure using its rollers, not all dryers do. Its filament presets take the guesswork out of operating the machine, and it's easy to understand and use. I wouldn't necessarily say cons, but some considerations are, the S4 takes up quite a bit of room, but this is unavoidable for a four spool filament dryer, so it's a trade-off. The noise the S4 creates when operating can be bothersome for some people. This is subjective though, and I guess it also depends where the machine is placed and the control screen beeping unfortunately cannot be muted. This for me was a bit annoying. 
in terms of people that I think the S4 would benefit, they are people with multiple 3D printers, people that are operating 3D printing businesses or print farms where quality control is important, and people with multicolor 3D printing setups such as myself. You can certainly opt to DIY your own enclosure like I did in one of my previous videos, but this accessory lets you automate the task with the click of a button and produces consistently great results. So that's it. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know what you guys think of the S4 or filament dryers in general down in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Plus check out my other 3D printing videos if you like this type of content. You'll find links in the video description if you're interested in purchasing the S4. And I've also included links for any of the tools, materials, and 3D print files featured. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you then.